So you've managed to get your hands on an 80 series Land Cruiser. Maybe a car you've always wanted. And it is still very factory stock. One of the first things you may want to get stuck into is changing out the car entertainment system in it. Especially if it's still got the original Toyota factory car audio in it. But you've noticed that there's something very different about the 80 series Land Cruiser's car radio system compared to most other cars around at the time. Well, for this 80 series video, Old Mate's going to explain it to you and give you some tips and tricks on what you can do to change out the factory car radio in an 80 series Land Cruiser. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Friday morning. We're talking about changing out your car radio. Assuming you've bought a pretty much still factory stock 80 series Land Cruiser. Now before we get into this video, whilst technically I don't have to say it because of this video, I'm going to anyway because we all know if I don't, someone's going to watch this video and I'm going to get into a world of pain. So here we go. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. Okay. Now, Toyota for years, in some cases, depending on make of vehicle and model of vehicle, the sound systems in them were reasonably good, considering, especially, you know, around the early to mid 90s. And depending on the model of car you got from Toyota was dependent on how good a sound system you got. Now, in some cases, some models ran the old Philips car radio, and we're all probably very familiar with that one, especially if you got the one with the auto reverse cassette deck in it. Other models and makes ran Fujitsu 10 car radios, which had early generation PLL synthesized tuners in them. And in some upper level models, you may have been lucky enough to get a Technics car radio, which was at about the time Technics was getting into car entertainment, back when we had the National Panasonic and Technics, Technics all under the Panasonic thing. So it was about the same time that Panasonic took over National. Now. I'm working on the assumption here, we all know who National is, we all know who Panasonic is, and we all know who Technics are. The Technics car radios were pretty damn good for the time. Some of them were doubled in, and in, in some cases you had a CD player and a cassette deck in one head unit. That was prominent more so in some of the VX models, and I think the Marlin or the 40th anniversary model had that in it as well. But your bog standard 80 series came out with either a Philips car radio or the old Fujitsu 10, which is strangely enough made by Fujitsu Electronic Company. So if you've bought your still factory standard 80 series, you may notice that it's got five speakers in it. Now hang on a minute, old mate, five speakers? Most cars only had four speakers, not the 80 series. In some cases, depending on the model of 80 you got, you could end up with a 6-inch subwoofer in, in the boot, powered by a high input amp. Now, we all know the difference between high and low input when it comes to a power amp. I'm not going to explain it, because that's just going over stuff that 99.9% .9 of people already know. So the high input came off, in some cases, a bridged rear connection. Okay, and you would often find in the right court, right rear quarter panel inside the boot, there'd be a little clarion power amp. Now, sometimes you did get a clarion head unit, I should also say, but it was very rare. But you would end up with, in some cases, either a clarion or a Fujitsu 10 high input power amp. 
to a 6-inch subwoofer. Now, back in the 90s, a 6-inch sub in a car could have been considered high-end luxury car audio. But also, you've got to remember, a lot of cars were running cassette. And whilst cassette's low-end bass was reasonable, depending on the cassette you used, the sub added an extra dimension because of the paper cone speakers Toyota was using in the doors and the dash. One of the first things I did with my 80 series when I got it was to rip out the Alpine system and unsurprisingly old mate dropped in a complete Pioneer package. But what do you do with the existing sub? How do you go about making sure A it still works but B what if you just want to change the head unit? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain the ways of getting around this problem, remembering that the subwoofer in, in the back of the 80 may only be 10 or 20 watts. Your average car radio, as we all know, ranges from anything from about 4x40, 4x35 watt, right up to 4x50 watt on the standard out. Obviously, if you add a power amp, that goes up exponent exponentially and or logarithmically. We all know my soft spot for Pioneer, and all but one car I've had has had a Pioneer car radio in it. All but one car I've had. So, for this video, I thought we'd go out to the 80 series, I'd explain the car radio setup in the 80, and also give you some tips and tricks about how to get around this 6-inch sub, and whether or not, depending on whether you're a music lover, a young person who likes to thrash his ears out at 125 dB SPL, or you just want to make it that the radio sounds better, picks up stations better, etc. Let's head out to the 80 series and we'll have a sticky beak. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are at the 80 series and we'll start in the cab. It's probably the best way to get into this. Now, having done a lot of car radio work over the years, I've got used to fitting and replacing them. Now, as I said, I, by default, go to Pioneer when it comes to any form of um, car radio. All right, so the speaker there, the speaker there, the two in the back doors, it's all Pioneer. There are two types of car radio you can fit into the 80 series. There's a doubled in which we're all familiar with, but I went with single din so I could still use this for other stuff. You know, I can put my cigarettes in here, I can put my phone and wallet in here, um, whatever needs to go in there. Now, depending on how you want to set your uh, entertainment area up will depend. Um, some people will take this out and drop their two-way in, either um, put the head unit up there and the two-way there or vice versa. As you know, my two-way's under here. And that's just where I wanted to put it. Okay. Now, the good thing with most uh, aftermarket car radios, and I'm talking mainly Pioneer, is you can get the adapter plug to go from the head unit loom to the car's physical loom, which is really good because, you know, you're not having to re re one, rerun, I'm sorry, wiring, all right, which is exactly what I did here. Now, when I bought the car, as I've said in the past, I had a, Alpine sound system, which if you've seen the Hilux aerial video I uploaded on Monday uh, for the other half's father's Hilux, the head unit in that is the what came with this. But as I said at the beginning, with the 80 series, you had, I think it was Fujitsu 10, Philips, and I think with, the, is it the Marlin, the 40th, and the VX Sahara, I think you got the big Technics doubled in. I think, I can't remember. Now, we're all familiar with the old Philips uh, head units. Ford used them in the Laser. I think Toyota used them in a couple of cars as well, uh, the Corolla and that. But for those that aren't aware, the Philips head unit, you had a, a small screen here. You had two knobs here, five buttons across here, uh, a couple of buttons for everything else. You had a tone control rather than bass and treble and a... Um, longitudinally mounted cassette deck, uh, whether it was auto eject or uh, auto reverse. Now, the thing with the 80 series was it was one of the few cards out at the time that came with a default subwoofer. 
One six inch subwoofer, which ran off various power slash crossover systems, as I've mentioned previously. I'll just get that box out of the road for a moment. And it would run into behind this little storage compartment and along the uh, loom line into the dashboard. Now, before I bought my big subwoofer and my Pioneer 800 watt monoblock power amp, this was just running off the standard crossover. I then got the power amp and an 800 watt power amp into a, um, I think this is a 50 watt subwoofer. Now, I replaced the subwoofer in this um, a while ago. Um, and this is before I bought that big one that was there. So what do you do when you buy your 80 series and it's still got the stock factory system in it? Well, what a lot of people do is flat out replace it. But does that mean you have to replace the sub? Not necessarily. You don't have to replace it. I like music, okay? So I'm a little bit all over the shop. I listen to Talkback Radio by default, but I do like to listen to music either off the phone or off a CD. So before I bought the big sub, I had the power amp wired into this thing. Now you've got to remember, the original factory sub that, this, that these came with wasn't exactly high powered. If anything, it was only a little bit more powerful than maybe the four... Um, speakers okay now you've seen my speakers before there they are there Un unsurprisingly it's all pioneer now the only thing that what isn't pioneer is this little six inch speaker i got this out of one of those little home theater type subwoofers so if you go out and get yourself a four by 45 watt uh, head unit, say, for example, from Pioneer or Fusion or Clarion or Sony or Kenwood, can you actually still use this? Well, you can, but you're going to have to remember that it, it's, it's only going to be able to respond to certain frequencies because of the internal factory crossover power amp that was already in the system uh, by default. The 80 series sound system from the factory was probably one of, uh, at least at the GXL model, was not actually that bad. It was pretty, pretty good, actually. Um, obviously, as you go up, you know, you've got everything from the G, well, the RV6 is below my model, but you got the GXL, you had the Marlin, you had the VX, you had the VX Sahara. And with incremental increase in model, you got a better and better sound system. That stands to reason. But old mate, well, he wants to put his subwoofer back in. Okay. Now, how do we go about doing all this? Theoretically, I could probably run that off the 800 watt monoblock power amp. Chances are, though, I'm going to I'm going to blow the living hell out of that speaker. So I'm going to actually end up putting the, my main subwoofer back in if I can find my tie down straps for it. I've got no idea where my tie down straps are gone for it. Um, now, <clears throat> let me explain why I tie this down rather than bolting it to the, uh, the floor pan there. Simply so I can remove it. That's basically so I can remove it. Because you've got to remember, if we go up to Bendigo or anything, the back of this car is packed to the hilt. Okay? So I need to be able to take the sub out, especially when we're going away at Christmas or for a long weekend or something like that. We've got, you know, the other half's taking a heap of stuff. From the front of the car radio, the head end, or head unit, mm -hmm. what options do you have? Well, look, you can go double din, but you've got to remember, a lot of four-wheel drivers, we're always scrounging for storage space to put stuff. So if you go with double din, you're going to lose storage here to put other stuff in. You've got a cup holder there. You've got the center console, although some people put a fridge here. You've obviously got the glove box. Some people take the overhead system out and put in a two-way up there, and then they might put in a, um, a digital 
uh, sub tank fuel gauge, maybe somewhere down here, maybe next to the sub tank switch or whatever. Now this all changes with the 94 to 90, early 97 model, the layout of this, all right? It all basically is a bit different, okay? I'm still running around with a early 90 series dashboard configuration. <clears throat> although the instrument cluster doesn't change. If you're going to replace your head unit and you don't really want to muck around with rewiring up your speaker systems, your best option is to get the adapter loom for your head unit to the factory loom. Now, that doesn't mean you don't replace your speakers. As you can see with, with the doors, all right, I'll take the... You can see there, there's actually a spot to put a six inch speaker in the door, which with the VX Sahara, instead of having speakers in the dashboard, they're in the door. So you had two six inch there, two six inch in the back door and the sub in the rear. Okay, so basically when it comes to replacing the car radios in these, if you want, you can, and I would probably suggest you would want to replace the car radio, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Just coughed up a lung. Often when people buy a, a second-hand car, the first thing they do is replace the car radio. If you've bought a VX Sahara, though, you probably won't need to unless you really are a music lover. So, I mean, obviously, if you were going to ask me what sort of head unit to put in your Land Cruiser, I'm going to go with Pioneer off the bat, okay, straight away. I mean, that's fairly evident. Um, I've said many times in the past, I am a Pioneer fanatic, right? Any time I come across anything Pioneer, I'm, you know, frothing at the mouth about it. And the thing with Pioneer, too, is they've never lost their... Uh, quality of audio is probably the best way of putting it. They've never lost their quality of audio. So a head unit from Pioneer, as far as old mate's concerned, is absolutely beautiful, okay? Now, you're probably going to sit there and say, hang on, backyard, you've bought a CD player. Why didn't you just get a Bluetooth iPod one? Didn't want one. I've still got CDs, so I wanted a CD player, right? Pioneer are moving away from these, okay? They're going to basically CD-less head units. Um, some of the more common Pioneer head units are basically Bluetooth, uh, iPod, Android uh, support. The doubled-in one, now the problem you've got with a doubled-in one is obviously you'll lose all this, okay? Now for those that don't understand DIN, it's the amount of space used by the car radio. Okay, so this is singled in, doubled in is two of them, okay? Now, a doubled in, some of them will have, say, the CD player at the top, you flip the lid down, you may have a cassette deck behind it. It's very rare these days with aftermarket head units, in some cases, to even have a cassette deck. In fact, I now think it's almost non-existent. The reason I would suggest you get the wiring adapter loom for your head unit to the factory loom is so you don't have to rewire the car. Otherwise, you've got to rip up, you know, you've got to run wire from the front or out of the doors. You've then obviously got to wire, you know, through your floor pan. You've got to trace it into the door if you're going to put it in the door where the 80 series would normally be. You've then got to obviously run wiring to the back of your car for your sub or your power amp, or if you're just going to run the entire car off the power amp, you've got to run a set of RCA leads down to wherever your power amp is and your feed wires back on. It's, if, you, if you're if you a car radio serious enthusiast, you're going to do that. But if all you want to do is replace your head unit, it's best off just getting the, the, the bog standard um, adapter loom for it, which is exactly what I've done with my 80 series, okay? So now you're probably going to say, well, old mate, what sort of sub do you actually have? Like, if you're not using this, what are you using? A Clarion Pro Audio Comp subwoofer in a fully tuned sub box. Now, you're probably going to sit there and go, hang on, backyard, what are you doing with a Clarion sub? It was free. <laughs> <laughs> it was free. 
I, look, if I'd managed to get a Pioneer subwoofer exactly the same from a Pioneer comp subwoofer for free, I'd have a Pioneer. But this was free. So for free, eh, look, I'm happy to be marginally flexible. Now, this is where I could get myself into a world of hurt. The sub amp needs to be remounted. Now, ideally, I want to put it under the seat, but the chances are I may have to bolt it somewhere I don't want to bolt it, unfortunately. Um, look, putting the power amp underneath the seat isn't a great idea, I know. Um, ideally, what you'd probably want to do with your power amp, if you're going to do it, is bolt it to something. You know, now remember, I have a seven-seat Land Cruiser, all right? My seats are in the shed because I need the boot space, but I have a seven-seat Land Cruiser. Now, theoretically, I could probably bolt it to one of the seat mounts if I wanted to. I can, you know, drill into the sideboard there, whatever. Um, I'm going to have to figure that out, but... Uh, this is um, this is my sub. Now, what I do with this is I strap it to the back seat, okay? And that way I can take it out if I need it, if I need the extra boot space in here, which, you know, if I'm going to the tip is, you know, obviously needed because of the amount of stuff that I try and pack into the 80 series to go to the tip with. So what I'd suggest you do, if you have bought yourself a GXL 80, all right i would be inclined for you to obviously replace the car radio if you've bought one that's already got a car radio um already um you may want to replace it depending on what the car radio is like if the speakers are blown obviously you replace your speakers but essentially i'm going to refit the subwoofer into the car today which is uh exactly what I'll do and I'll uh, show you once I've got it all fitted but there we go so there's some car audio advice and the layout for the car radio system that came with the GXL now remember I've got this GXL update limited model um, because it's post October 1993 which is called the GXL update or GXL limited depending on how you want to talk about it um, and as I've said many times in the past, whatever worked in my car got into the 94. What didn't work in my car didn't get into the 94, strangely enough. So there we are. 80 Series Car Audio. Stick around. We're going to fire up that Blu-ray player today as well. Don't forget tonight, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, GMT UTC plus 11. We will have the first for 2019, the TGIF edition of the Backyard Tech Channel live stream conversations. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.